Hi guys, back again. Um, today I want to talk about how I breed and cultivate my own live food in the form of copepods. These are really, really great source of detritus, of ore inside the aquarium. Um, uh, they're really easy to breed, to keep um, yourself with a nice uh, plethora of these little dudes inside your tank. Um, they're great for eating uh, really sort of tiny, tiny uh, like algae that grow on the rock, but also a constant food source for your fish. So they've got something to graze on. Great if you've got a refugium, they can sort of breed in there and then slowly get back to your main tank. Um, I normally breed these out in the garden in the summer, but as the temperature have dropped, my culture has really slowed down. So I'm just gonna do a little indoor culture to show you what I do. So first of all, you're gonna need a vessel. So this is gonna house your pods. Next, you're gonna need some salt water. Uh, this is gonna be at uh, 35 parts per thousand, or 1.026 Pacific gravity. You're also gonna to wanna to make sure that you mix up nice, fresh salt water because you don't want anything um, that's gonna contaminate your culture. So don't be tempted to use um, old tank water or anything like that. Of course, you're gonna need your live pods. I've got these ones from Reef Phyto, who are a UK-based online seller. Um, really easy to get hold of. You see that they just arrive in the post. So that's a good starter culture there. And then you're gonna need something to feed them. So you've got this copepod food here. So once you've got all your ingredients, Feel like I'm making a cake. Once you've got your receptacle, you want to feel it about halfway. There we go. Just want to make sure that's about half, well, between half and three quarters full. The next thing to do is to now add a few drops of our feed. We just want to turn the water slightly greenish. Let's just put one, two, three, a few drops in there. And now it's time to add the contents of these guys. What I like to do is just give it a bit of a, a bit of a shape because sometimes they all do settle to the bottom. And then I'll probably go back in and just give the pouch fill it up with some salt water and just give it a little rinse because you can see some of these guys, you don't want to waste any. There we go, so once we've got these guys all in here, it's time to add our aeration and lid. The lid's gonna stop any contaminants um, and uh, stop the evaporation as well. They will need a day and night cycle, but they don't necessarily need a light. So if you can put them by a window or a room that gets some sunlight and then you can keep an eye on it, you wanna just keep making sure that the water stays this green tinge. Um, and over the next couple of weeks or so, they're gonna reproduce. Um, I would normally find like a couple of uh, weeks into it, it doesn't really seem to have changed that much, but then all of a sudden you get a massive, massive growth spurt, uh, well, or population explosion. Um, to keep the water under control, you can sieve it out and do 50% water changes if you feel like it's getting too grim. You can either just swap the vessel over and just start with another one and then clean this one. So you can just keep swapping them over, which sometimes makes life a little bit easier. So let's add the airflow. Okay, and here's the lid now. Um, the whole kit came from Roof Fighter, but I've just added this um, rigid airline tube just to the end, just one that doesn't quite reach the bottom. And you can add that. There we go, and this whole kit is available from um, Reef Phyto online. Um, and we just have to keep adding the feed to keep it at this color. Um, and that's it. Thanks for watching guys, uh, like, comment, share, subscribe um, and I'll have another video out very soon.